Uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Hector Velarde, uh, and I'm going to talk about collective cover, that it's a product we have been working for uh, around two years. Uh, I've been I work on a company in Brazil called Simples Consultoria. Uh, I do mostly uh, project management and quality assurance stuff, uh, but sometimes uh, I also do some programming. I've been working with Plon since late uh, 2005, and uh, I've been a member of, more involved in, with the Plon community since the 2011. Uh, and I want to say that I'm not the author of the package. I'm just the guy who take, takes care of some of the stuff there. Uh, so what is collective cover? In, in the words of, of uh, the Plum Foundation president, Paul Roland, it's, it's the same working editor-friendly way of creating front pages. Uh, this project started in, I think, uh, late uh, 2011 uh, with the work of Carlos de la Guardia and also some guys from Argentina like Franco and uh, Silvestre Wenz. Uh, we were working on uh, some projects in Venezuela uh, to bring some uh, new sites on, online. And uh, we have some experience before that uh, with uh, a, a site uh, we created in, in Mexico uh, for, a, for a newspaper called La Jornada. Uh, this site was, was using um, a package called Composite Pack for creating the front pages. Uh, editors really love it uh, and they were stuck uh, with Plum 2.5 because there, there were no other options for Plum 3 because, uh, well, there were other options like uh, collage, but nobody liked the, the user interface. So the site were, were stuck in, in, in that version. In, as I said, in 2011, we started working with some other sites in, in, in Venezuela. And after we gained some experience, uh, not only with, uh, with the new version of Plum, uh, but also with uh, dexterity and, and other stuff, uh, we decided that it was the time to try to, to do something about the, the lack of, uh, of a de decent package to create the front pages. So we started looking for options. Carlos de la Guardia is uh, a friend of, of us uh, that lives in Mexico, started some work based on... on first we tried to, to update a composite pack, but the code was so old, I think it was created for... 2.0 or something like that, that uh, and some of, of parts of, of it were really, really uh, cryptical. Nobody knows how, how it works right now. So we decided to start an, a new project, and, and we started uh, a package called, um, how, how was the name? I don't remember, Franco. Okay. We renamed it later to Collective Cover, and we started trying with portlets, uh, but then after, after, uh, Watching the, the talk that David Glick gave, I think, on, on San Francisco in 2011, we decided uh, to start trying with tiles. That seems to be the, the, the future at, at that time. Uh, Franco started working on that, and he, we decided that it was a, a good idea. But we had no time at, at that moment, because we had to, uh, to finish a project. Uh, and the, the product stayed sleeping like for, I think, six months. After that, we, um, we joined forces with, between Simples Consultoria, the, the Rabbit, the company that Franco was working on, and a Mexican company that was behind the, the projects in, in Venezuela. And we uh, start to, to work on this for uh, this, this uh, customer that is called Venezolana Television, that it's a, it's a television uh, channel in Venezuela. Uh, we run probably the, the longest uh, sprint ever that takes for two weeks in, in Sao Paulo. Uh, th these are the guys that, that start the, 
<laughs> the project. Uh, you can see some familiar faces probably over there. And we spent, uh, as I said, two weeks working on this. Uh, the idea was uh, to finish the, the sprint with something that was usable and that we can uh, put into production on, on, on the customer new site. Obviously, uh, this was not true because, <laughs> as you already know, all the sprints uh, ends with something that it's probably 80 or 90 percent, and then you have to, to go the, the, the other 10 percent that it's going to take the other 90 percent of the time, as somebody said. <laughs> okay, uh, when we started working on this, we look for um, some other packages, as I, I already mentioned. We, we take uh, experience from Composite Pack that I think has the, the, the best uh, user interface. And I, uh, we also saw uh, CMF content panels that was widely used in, in Brazil for, for creating the front pages. We look on collage, of course, and we, we also look on collect, no, collective panels came after, I think, when we were uh, st uh, starting the, the package. Uh, collective panels is, it, it try to use a, a, an approach more similar to what we were thinking on, on, at the beginning. Uh, it was using uh, portlets, but we, we don't want it to use portlets at all for this. Uh, this these are some of the sites that are, are using right now uh, collective cover in, in production. Uh, this is a, a magazine in Brazil that is quite important. Mm, this is a, a site on Netherlands that Paul's run, Paul runs. This is another site that it's based on Brasilia. It's uh, from the Federal uh, Bureau of Administrations. Mm, this is another new site, also in Sao Paulo, based. This is uh, this, the site I, I mentioned yesterday. This is the President's uh, of Brazil site. This is not only using the uh, that uh, distribution made for for the government, but also we managed to put collective cover into the distribution. Which it was a really good idea. Uh, and this is another side that it's some sort of uh, aggregator of of news from from the government. Uh, uh, right now, collective cover is is on the version. 1.0 alpha 8, I forgot the A, post 1, because I had to make a, a post release, uh, an emergency release, uh, because uh, some, something were bro was broken on the alpha 8 release. It's compatible with Plon 4.2 and 4.3. Uh, we, are, we already set up a, a, a Travis build for Plon 5, but we have no idea what is going on. I think also Plum 5 is going to be, to be using uh, jQuery 1.9, so it, it is not working right now. Uh, we are uh, compatible also with jQuery uh, 1.7 and 1.8. Uh, some numbers of, on this. We have made nine releases uh, right now. Uh, uh, the package, uh, as I said, that has been used uh, widely in production sites, so it's, it's safe to use it right now. As long as I, as I can tell you, there is uh, no uh, huge bug on, the, on there. There are some bugs that we have detected, but no, there is nothing that it's going to, to break uh, your site on this or, or your front page on this. Uh, there has been a lot of, of um, interest on, on this lately. Uh, we, we see in an explosion of contributors after the last conference. Right now, there, there has been 48 contributors. Uh, we have a wide uh, testing coverage, almost 90%. Uh, unfortunately, JavaScript code is not tested at all. Probably this is something that we have to, to face during the sprint, or I don't know. Almost 2,000 commits, uh, almost 8,000 lines of code. And the, the product cost around $92,000, that it's interesting also. So I'm going to make a, a quick demo for you, but I, because I think it's the best way to. 
uh, I create a, a brand new plum site and, and I fill out some news stuff on it. I will install Collective Cover here. Seems it says finish. Okay, and I'm going to create a, a, a brand new uh, front page for for this site. First thing you will see is that uh, you will have here uh, the opportunity to select some uh, um, some layouts that are already included on, on the on the package. We haven't changed this because, in fact, we don't use it. Uh, we probably uh, have to select better names. If you select one of these uh, layouts, you will see more or less how it, it will look like. But we, uh, you don't know what kind of tiles are you using. I'm going to talk more about this. So I, I will start with, a, with an empty layout, probably. It's going to be better to show you the, the whole thing. And after this, you will see uh, a couple of new uh, tabs you will see a tab named Compose and a tab named Layout. If you go, the first thing we have to do is to create a new layout. You can see, uh, I'm going to open this a little bit more. In this, in this part of the screen, we have the possibility to add more rows or more columns to the layout. Uh, I'm going to add uh, first uh, a tile over here. A, what is a tile? I'm talking about tiles. Tile is a, a small piece of content that is going to be shown in some place. After the demo, I'm going to talk more about that. So I, I, I will say that I want a carousel here. Okay, and then I will add uh, another row over here. Uh, as you can see, when you add a row, automatically you are adding also a column. So I'm, not, I'm going to add another column here. You can change the, the size of your, of your columns, of this column with uh, this slider. I'm going to leave it uh, like that. And I'm going to add uh, a collection tile over here and a couple, a basic tile, just to show you uh, all some of these things, an embed tile, and that's it, I think. It's enough to, for, the, for the demo. Uh, after that, it's, uh, if I don't do anything else, there I'm going to use the defaults on this. After, after putting some content, I'm going to change the defaults to show you uh, what you can make. First thing is that I have to save the, the layout. The, the layout is not saved. And now I can go to the Compose uh, tab. On the Compose tab, you will see uh, your tiles already there. And you will see this button that is called Add Content. If you uh, click on it, uh, you will see uh, this widget that let me add some content on this uh, on these uh, tiles. So I will add a couple of of elements here to to the gallery, and I, I will add also. This one was a, a collection, so I will look for a collection. Here we have a collection. As you can see, OK, perfect. I can also make some stuff like looking for content, if I, uh, because the, the widget will show you the, the latest content added to the site. But I, will ask, uh, I can do things like this, for example. I can search for stuff. Or I can uh, browse the site uh, and look for content inside of it. OK, so I will add uh, another content uh, to, this, to this tile here. 
the basic tile that is behind this. Perfect. So that, that's it. Uh, I, I just finished creating my, my cover, but it's not pretty, very pre pretty, pretty. Uh, as you can see, I have a, a, a carousel here. Images soft. This is a, a bug that we, we already uh, we already fixed. The problem is that I have to come here right now. Ah, uh, as I show you, the, the, uh, we have a, a carousel here. We have a, the results of a collection here in this tile. We have a basic tile here with some information uh, displaying this. And I added another uh, tile that is not right now here. Uh, but I'm going to configure this to, to make it a little bit better. The first thing I have to do is change the size of the image user, use it here. So I will come here to the layout stuff and I will configure the, the tile. The problem is that uh, by default, uh, it is using the, the uh, smaller size. So I will use the, the, la the largest one. This part of, of the product needs, needs a little bit more of love right now. But in, in, this case, in the case of the carousel tile, there is nothing else. Uh, more, most of this stuff doesn't make sense at all. But in the, in, the, in the collection tile, I can do some more interesting stuff. For instance, I have a, a field to define uh, a class that I will use, uh, uh, that I will apply to, to this tile. I will use here a, a shadow on this. I also uh, want, want to use a different, uh, I don't want to see a header here, so I will click here and it, this, uh, this field is not going to be shown. Uh, I'm going to use uh, an H3 header for the title. I want to see the description. I don't want to see the, the date. I will use a smaller image for probably, a, let's use a tile. Uh, it's gonna be pos positioned on the, on the left. And I'm going to, I want this uh, on top because I want the, the, the title to flow. Um, I'm going to, to display five elements and I'm not going to display a, foot, a footer. Or yes, I'm going to display a footer with H3 also. So that's it. And this, I'm going to configure this also. I'm going, I'm going to, to make the same thing, I want the image first, uh, probably a bigger image. Uh, I'm not, I don't want categories, not dates. Okay, and probably that's fine. So right now, if I go here, you will see that my images are, are better. Okay. And this looks a little bit better, no? Let's let's add some some content to the to the embedding tile. Let's click on edit. I will probably look for something here. Okay, meanwhile, I, I will, will show you. Uh, the, the idea behind the embedding tile is that you can put any embedding code over here. Some people, it, it's funny because the other day, one, one of the guys that work on the office uh, decided to put some JavaScript code over there, and it worked. <laughs> it was quite interesting uh, what people start thinking about this kind of, and this, is, this could be a, a, a problem, if a security issue also. So some, uh, somebody asked to, to protect this, this tile uh, with some sort of uh, uh, permission mechanism. By the way, uh, one of the, uh, the things we, we were trying to, all the objectives we were trying to, to reach with the release of Collective Cover was also this. Uh, you can share the edit, edition, the editing, uh, uh, 
content on, on the front page of, of a site, but leaving uh, some parts of the, of the front page with different permissions for different uh, groups. Unfortunately, uh, at some point, uh, that part of the, of the code uh, was broken, and we, ha we haven't found uh, <laughs> how to fix it again, so, but the, the idea was there. I don't know why uh, the YouTube is not working, but anyway, I will add anything over here so you can see. Mm. Okay, that's it. So anything you, you put in, inside the, the embedding uh, field will be displayed. It can be uh, an iframe, it can be some JavaScript, it, it can be whatever you want, or some code. We, we have also some other, uh, some other tiles that we, we can try. Uh, for instance, the, um, the banner tile. Let's see. The idea of the banner tile is that you drop anything uh, that has an image, and it will take that image, and it will link to that uh, element. So for instance, I can take another piece of content uh, let's see. That's fine. Probably we have a, an issue with refreshing. Or the or the tile is broken. So I'm going to edit it directly here. I'm going to select an image. And if I do that, I, I get the image, link it to uh, Oh, it seems that the problem is with the internet. Link it to the, the, the site I, I want. If I remove the image, for instance, and I put some text here, then this style is going to work like this. That's it. Uh, some other things that we can do, for instance, I can replace uh, parts of the For instance, of the basic tile, I can say, I, I don't want this, this is very common. I, don't, I want a different title from the one that is, that is shown here. That's it. And now, this is only used here on, 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 on cover. The original uh, content object has not been changed, okay? As you can see there. So this is this is the way we create a, a front page on here. Uh, what are what are, uh, what are other stuff you can do? We can we can change the order of, uh, for instance, of a row. I, I can move this row down here, and I can change also uh, the order of the of the tiles over here on columns. And if I go back to the view, you will see that everything has changed. Okay, it's very easy, very powerful. There are other options. We integrated this with, um, for instance, with um, um, how is called this this functionality, working copy. So, for instance, uh, suppose that you you want to create a, a copy of this and prepare if something is going to happen in the following minutes. Uh, you can make a checkout of this. You are creating a copy of, of the front page. 
you edit, you edit it. For instance, I'm going to, to bring it back the, the original layout. And when you finish, for instance, something happened, the, the, the World Cup is going to be decided on, on penalties. You have two different uh, options for if one uh, team wins and if, if the other wins. And when you finish, you only have to, to come here again and use the, the check-in option. And then the, the original uh, front page is going to be replaced. This is also useful when, when editors are, are doing a lot of changes uh, on the front page and you don't want to, to be refreshing the, the front page so, so frequently. Uh, the other stuff uh, I, I can show you over here is that we have a configlet. In this configlet, we, we can define a, a few stuff. Uh, for instance, you can define what, which styles uh, are you going to be uh, showing here. For instance, I, I can remove uh, the, file, the, the file tile and the content body that I didn't show you. And this is uh, also an, an option to only show some of the content types uh, on, on, the, um, on the search widget. If you don't want to show some, some kind of objects, you just remove it from, from here, and, and that's it. Uh, and this is the, the other interesting part. If you created some uh, classes and some styles for, for your cover, I, don't, I didn't see that it was, uh, that it was, uh, it was with a different color on, on, the, on the background. I didn't see. OK, I will check that. Uh, you can just define the, the name of the style and, and it will apply the class uh, here. And here we, you, you can also define different grid systems to, to be used on, on cover. Okay, so if we go back now, you will see that I don't have any, nor uh, the file tile, nor the, neither the, the content body. Let's, let's check this again. I'm going to use a dark background here on this tab. OK. Here is it. Ah, and the shadow over here. It's, it's working fine. So as you can see, there are many options. With, with very few tiles, you can ma make many different options. I will show you the, one of the, the front pages of the, this, one of these customers. There is this, uh, this magazine. They have a really complex uh, front page that they have created uh, with standard tiles, like, like the ones that I show you, and uh, probably only one uh, custom tile. As you can see, it's huge. Here is the embedding tile working. This is a, a custom tile that, that uh, takes some uh, uh, cost, custom content type also. And this is also mo more embedding tiles. Mm -hmm. How is this doing? The yes. See? Yeah. So as you can see, this is quite complex uh, front page. Uh, they, they are changing all day long. Uh, some, some stuff that they have asked for is to be, to be able to drag and drop. Uh, because I, uh, I didn't show you, but for instance, we have a different tile that is called the list tile that you can drag and drop elements. I'm going to add it. I'm going to put the, the gallery below. Mm. I'm going to add a, a list tile over here. And I'm going to add also some content to it. Mm.
okay? Here in the list style, you can do uh, things like this one, change the order of the, of, the, of the items on it. And one of the, as I was telling you, one of the uh, features that the customer is asking desperately is to be able to do things like taking this object and putting it over another tile. This is something that we are missing, that we haven't had time to do, to do it. Uh, that's, that is the demo. I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit more about the, the inners and I'm going to show you how a tile is, is created. It's, it's really easy. So some of the internals. Uh, collect cover, uh, some people was confused at the, at the beginning. They, they thought that we were trying to replace the echo. No, that was not the idea. We were using the echo stuff. Uh, and we were, we were trying to solve just a, a very specific problem that it's quite complex, but it's very specific. We, were, we, we wanted to reuse this stuff, and as I mentioned many times, we wanted that this work uh, serves uh, in, at some point or in some way to, to bring Deco back again. I think in, in we have we have to do some, some about that because now I see more, uh, more people using tiles and I also see more people uh, uh, developing or, or trying to, to solve other issues that, uh, like, uh, that are going to, uh, to bring stuff like Plon Mosaic that it's, it's going to be important. Uh, but let's, let's talk about uh, how, is, uh, how Collective Cover works. We use three packages uh, of Deco. It's called Plon Tiles, the first one that implements uh, all the stuff uh, about tiles, the, uh, the definition of tiles. And as I mentioned, what is a tile? A tile is, in fact, a browser view, just a browser view with some configuration that that configuration can be stored or not. A, a tile can be transitional or a tile can be persistent. If a tile is uh, transitional, you will pass some data to it uh, in, the, in the request. Uh, if a tile is persistent, it will store uh, its configuration as annotations on the, on the part of the object. Uh, all collective cover tiles uh, inherit from persistent tile, uh, from prone tiles. So uh, we are storing all this information even uh, for instance, not only the configuration, but also links, uh, relations, and on tiles, on, on, on uh, annotations on, on the cover uh, object. All of this stuff is, is, is inside Plon Tiles. Plon APP Tiles uh, is the UI integration for Plon Tiles. It defines a couple of browser views for uh, adding, editing, uh, deleting tiles. Uh, on cover, we are uh, overriding some of this stuff uh, and some other are we are not using at all. Uh, lately, or lastly, uh, Plon APP Blocks uh, is, is a package that is um, in charge of uh, putting the tiles where they belong. For instance, uh, it will take uh, the links or, or the, um, the position uh, on the of the tiles on inside the, the layout, it will take the, the content of the, of the tile and put it where, where it's defined. It, 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 it does this using Plon Transform Chain. I don't understand how it works, but anyway. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, this product was created uh, only in, in two weeks. Uh, some of the stuff, uh, after being using it and, and trying to, to implement more features to fix bugs, uh, we have discovered that some of the uh, decisions that, that we made on, on the beginning were not the, the right ones. For instance, we created a, a new type of, of tile that uh, I think that was a bad decision. 
because we are not able to use plum standard tiles, and now we have two types of tiles. I think one of the, is, this is one of the things we have to fix in, in the future, we, uh, because the only difference uh, uh, between plum tiles and, and collective cover tiles is that we use a configuration form. And we are using this uh, through an adapter, and I think we should probably, or we could probably adapt plum standard tiles provide this functionality in a way that is not, uh, uh, is not uh, incompatible with the way the tiles uh, work right now. Uh, I'm going to show you uh, the code of a, of a very easy, uh, simple tile, that is the embedding tile that we were talking, or we were using before. This is the code. First of, of all, we define the, the fields that we are using on, on the on the tile, as, as I mentioned, we are uh, we, we are inheriting from from persistent tiles. In fact, we are inheriting here from from a base tile that define a lot of stuff that that cover uses. Uh, but this base tile that is uh, in in this package is inheriting from persistent tile um, from 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 plum tiles. So this is same stuff as, as defining any form. Uh, in, in Plon, uh, we have three fields that are, are the fields that are, are shown on, on the configuration form. And then we have the class. We have some stuff here. Where, for instance, we have uh, uh, attributes uh, to, to describe uh, the tile uh, behavior. For instance, if the tile is configurable, then you can click on, on that uh, um, that role on, on the layout stuff to change some stuff over there. If the tile is editable, then you will, it will show the edit uh, link on, on the compose uh, screen. And if the tile is droppable, for instance, uh, the embed tile is not droppable. You cannot drag and drop an object and, and, uh, inside the, the, the embed tile but because it doesn't make sense. No? You, the embed tile is, is for another use. And it also has a short name that is defined. So this, this style is quite simple. We only define two, or we override two methods. The method that is called is empty, that is used to, to display the, the, a string that tells you, please do something with this style. And the other is the accepted content tiles, that the content types that in, in this case, this method uh, should define the list of content types that you can drag and drop on, on, on this. In this case, as the tile is not a, a droppable, the, this list is empty. So this is the whole, uh, the whole tile definition. After that, you will need to declare this tile uh, on CCML using the plum tile directive. And it's quite easy. It's like any other, probably browser view in this case. You, you, you say the name. The, the title, or whatever, the icon that is going to be used, the add permission. I think you were, you were making some changes to, to, for the editing permission and the, some other permission. I don't, what happened with that? Yes, it's bothering me. I need to, I need, I need to do that tomorrow. Okay, we, c we can check that because this is, this is important, obviously, uh, because we can probably solve some other issues with that permissions. Uh, uh, solving in another, in another way. We define the schema, the class, and the, and the permissions that the, the person will have to, to access the, the tile. That's it. And you can see the template of this tile. It's, I think it's quite easy also. In this case, if, I, if the tile is empty, I will show this, this stuff. And if not, and this is the ugliest part that we have to fix because we have a lot of, uh, of uh, conditionals over here to, to play with the configuration of the tile. This can be solved and it's, it's, it has been solved uh, on a senior way on, on other tiles already. But as a, any open source project, you only fix what you need to fix at, the, at, a, at a time. So th this is it, for instance, it will, it will uh, 
loop around all the fields on the tile, and if the field is visible, it will show this code. For instance, the, the, the title field, if the title is visible, it will check for the, the, the tag that it has to use, and then we'll use that. And that's it. This, this is how it works. Probably there is another, I think the, the basic tile is fixed. Yes, the basic tile, I, I create a, a method for this. Ah, no, it's the, this, this, the same thing. There are, there are other tiles that are fixed. OK, so this is, this is the way to, to create a, a tile. As you can see, it's very easy. The, the only complexity here is because we wanted to have everything configurable. So with very few uh, elements, you can do whatever, or almost whatever you want. So that's it. Uh, so what's, as I said, we are in version alpha 8. Uh, I don't know when, if, if, when we are going to, to, be, to beta, because I think there are many, many stuff to fix before this, and probably it's going to change the, the API. I, I was writing a small API for the, uh, for the package and moving some, some methods to the, to the content uh, to the content class, because when you try to, to do so many things in so short amount of, of time, you obviously you commit mistakes, and, and we need uh, a saner way to, to deal with, with tiles right, right now. Uh, so we, we want to continue fixing bugs, cleaning the user interface, because the user interf interface is, is far from, from perfect. We want to simplify the code. Uh, I, I will show you, for instance, the, the base style. It's, it's like hundreds of lines of code, what it defines. So we need to move some of these uh, methods out of here, because they don't belong to the, to the tile. They belong to, to the class. And that's it. What, what else? Uh, we want to standardize the, the tile templates, because right now, in some places, we have we have uh, the templates written in some way, and in some other, we have a, a different way of reading them. We want to achieve compatibility with jQuery 1.9, and also add support for Plon standard tiles, because at some point, I, I will want to get rid of, of collective cover tiles at all. I don't want to, to maintain tiles, and I don't want to maintain neither the layout editor. So. That's why I also want to probably use uh, Plon Mosaic at some point, uh, if we can use it. So at the end, we, we, will, f uh, end with a, we will finish with a, a more saner content type that just does some stuff, and that's it. We don't want to maintain a layout editor and native tiles. So that's it. Uh, any questions over here? Well, as long as I understand, Mosaic is going to be a, a replacement for Deco. That's it. And what is Deco? Deco, it's, the, it's a layout uh, framework and layout editor for Plum. So the idea uh, behind, as long as I understand, <laughs> the idea behind uh, Deco is to, to replace uh, all or to, de to define a, a layout uh, framework to be able to change or, or make the, all the, the layouts of the, uh, not only the content types, but all, also the, the, the whole CMS, uh, very easy to change, to manipulate it, to edit it, to, to move things around. And I think the, the important part of, of uh, having to start this discussion with the uh, collective cover because at, at the beginning some people start thinking, oh, uh, they want to replace that. No, that that was not the idea. There, there was even a, a sprint on like two years ago to, to bring Deco Light again to life, and I don't know what happened with that. <laughs> but I think the the idea was not that one. Uh, I think Deco is dead before arrival, 
I think probably Mosaic is going to, to leave at some point. I don't know what, 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 what were the results of, of the sprint, but I think uh, there were very clever people working on that. And we need uh, to bring that. Uh, and as, as I say, uh, Mosaic is going to, to give us a, a layout behavior. So you can enable this behavior and you will be able to change the, the layout of, of your content type of your object. And that's going to be, uh, I think, better than having to, to maintain a layout editor. I don't know if it's going to, to work uh, for, for cover because the layout uh, includes a lot of stuff that, it, it's, that are not included on, probably on, on Mosaic. But then we can just adapt this, this layout editor to, to fulfill our, our requirements and not having to maintain it. That's it. Any other question? So, uh, I want to say thank you. Uh, first of all, to, to the sponsors because they bring me here, and obviously my my employees they, that give me permission to come here also. And, and I, I want to say thank you especially to Nathan and to King King <laughs> Gujen for uh, the wonderful job they have done here on the sprint. And if you want to, to be part of, of, or do you want to collaborate with Collective Cover, just let me know. We will be very happy if you have any idea or whatever. Thank you very much. <laughs>